Well, welcome to the Bachelor of Science presentation uh, for Deakin University. My name is Mark Warren, and I'm the course director for the Bachelor of Science program. Before we get started, um, I'm going to do an acknowledgement of country. So Deakin University would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which our university campuses are based. The Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation on whose country our Geelong campus is located, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose country our Burwood campus is located, and the Peak Awarong people of the Ma Nation on whose country our Warrnambool campus is located. So the Bachelor of, this presentation for the, on the Bachelor of Science, um, we'll be looking at uh, the requirements for entry, uh, the different components of the Bachelor of Science program, the different teaching formats, the careers that can arise from a Bachelor of Science program, and then finally we'll touch on uh, possible um, further avenues of study uh, beyond the Bachelor of Science program. Um, this talk is both for domestic and inter international, prospective domestic and international students, uh, but, but before we get into talking about the details of the course, um, I just wanted to uh, point out to the international students that there's a number of other information sessions um, uh, to do with applying to Deakin as an international student, uh, fees and scholarships for international students, and on international life at Deakin. So there are other information sessions you can access. There's also the opportunity to uh, talk with people uh, online through uh, the web chat uh, function um, and um, uh, on open day, and um, uh, I encourage you to do that as well. Okay, so the Bachelor of Science program at Deakin, what, what are its major components? What is it about? Well, first of all, it provides a general science ed uh, education. So every student coming in the Bachelor of Science uh, degree program at Deakin will be required to undertake a range of basic studies in different science disciplines. That's so that you gain a general broad knowledge of areas of science and relevant maths. That's mostly undertaken at first year level. Then as you go into, generally speaking, as you go into second and third year level, you go into the more specialist training uh, areas of training, uh, discipline-based training uh, in the form of majors. And then the third component, uh, of the Deakin Bachelor of Science is our suite of professional practice units, um, including those which involve work integrated learning and uh, there to get you ready, work ready for uh, uh, graduate employment. So the entry requirements for getting into the Bachelor of Science degree, the, the single degree Bachelor of Science, which is three years duration, um, and is offered on the Burwood campus in, Ge in Melbourne and the Warm Ponds campus near Geelong. The entry requirements is that you require an ATAR of at least uh, within the 60s somewhere. It varies a little bit from year to year, but it's usually within the 60s as a lower selection rank. And you need to have um, a gauge of ECE with the right number of subjects and uh, units three and four. And you need to have had a study school in English, the normal English unit um, of at least 20. Or if you're doing uh, English as another language, um, you need to start a slightly highly, higher study score of 25. And so the, for students coming in through the VCE system who are at secondary school this year, um, applying for Deakin University next year, you'll need to do that through the VTAC system. So that's the Victorian Tertiary Admission Centre, and you put in an application through that system. You can apply for the Bachelor of Science either on the Burwood campus or on the Warnapong campus or both. And you can also apply for... Um, double degree programs that involve the Bachelor of Science. So for instance, there are Bachelor of Science, um, Bachelor of Laws, uh, double degree program. There's a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, double degree program. There's a um, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Science, double degree program. And there's a Bachelor of Science, Master of Teaching, uh, double degree program. Um, and they have all separate uh, VTAC entry um, uh, codes and those sort of things. Um, they're longer duration and uh, the ATAR scores vary, um, the highest being for uh, the Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Law, double degree program. But uh, VTAC entry uh, for school leavers is not the only way you can get into the Bachelor of Science program. There are other pathways through other tertiary or vet studies or through uh, substantial and relevant work experience. So you can um, um, get it. You, you can apply if you have a certificate for in a related discipline, or if you completed a diploma. 
uh, or partly completed diploma diploma in relative in in a relevant discipline, um, or have successfully completed um, uh, some subjects or units at, at another university, at least two. Um, they're all uh, ways. They're all ways in which you can apply to come into uh, the Bachelor of Science program at Deakin University. You can also apply if you have evidence of academic capability um, um, that's judged to be equivalent, uh, for example, uh, of work that you've done previously. So um, if you worked in a particular area of um, scientific area and you can put in an application um, to come to Deakin University to uh, do a Bachelor of Science and, and that application will be assessed on, on whether you have equivalent and relevant uh, work experience to gain entry. So there's very different pathways uh, to get into the Bachelor of Science program. All right, talking about the basic structure of uh, the program, uh, talk, first we're going to talk about the major sequences, which is the specialist training areas, which you normally do in your second and third year. And um, these have um, these each individual major is made up of a, a suite of uh, thematically linked and related uh, compulsory units. And you have to do six of them, and they have specific learning outcomes. So, um, if, for instance, if you do um, a major in chemistry, you'll do six chemistry units, which will, by the way, build on uh, the first year core units in chemistry as well. But it's separate from that first year core unit, you do additional six chemistry units, the second and third year. And that'll qualify you to uh, work in the area of chemistry uh, when you leave um, uh, Deakin University. So students have the opportunity to um, tailor the degree by through the selection of different um, uh, majors and uh, um, or on a major and different electives um, uh, um, as they go through the degree, focusing on particular. Uh, uh, desired career outcomes. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But students are encouraged to take, undertake double majors, particularly if they're doing the single degree, um, because that can really strengthen their capacity to get employment once they finish. So for instance, a lot of students doing the human biology major will also do a major in cell biology and genomics. And the combination it, it gives you a strong basis for employment within you know, pathology labs and those sort of uh, work environments. Um, um, yeah, so there, there, there's one example of where um, a double major is advantageous in terms of uh, gaining employment. So we look at the major sequences. Uh, we have four biology majors, animal biology, plant biology, human biology, and cell biology and genomics majors. So there they are four biology majors. And in, in addition to that, we have a chemistry major, an environmental science major, and a mathematics major, mathematical modeling major. Here indicates the campuses in which these are offered. So Burwood is, B is for the Burwood campus at, in Melbourne, and uh, WP is for the Warm Ponds campus near Geelong. And as you can see, most majors, not all, but most are offered at both campuses. The C here relates to um, cloud offering, which means that you can undertake the six um, units or subjects within the mathematical modeling all online. Okay. Doesn't mean you can take your whole degree online, but certainly the six um, compulsory major units you can take online. All right. So that was the major sequences. Now, the other component um, that I mentioned early on in my talk was the basic core studies, which every single BSc student needs to do. And these can sort of be broke up into two subsets. Um, the first is a basic training in the sciences and maths, which mostly occurs at first year. Um, and uh, you need to do a biology unit, chemistry unit, physics unit, an environmental science unit, and a mathematics unit. And so they're the basic training in science. Now, we understand the students come into Deakin University, <coughs> excuse me, um, with a varying uh, backgrounds in science. Not everybody's done, you know, um, VCE year 12 chemistry. It comes into the BSc. So we understand that. And so we provide um, a sort of tiered structure to our first year units, depending on your background. So for instance, there are two first year chemistry one units, one's a more basic unit, 
for students who uh, don't have a strong chemistry background uh, previously. And for those that have done well in VCE chemistry, they can do a more advanced uh, first year chemistry program, which then can lead on to, uh, for, uh, for instance, a chemistry major. Um, and we have the same sort of thing with mathematics. We have the option of two first year units in mathematics, um, one in statistics and one in the area of mathematical modeling. Although the students select the maths unit more on the basis of which major they ultimately want to do. Um, but you'll get, when you come in, if you come to Deakin University, you'll get relevant course advice this when you enroll in your first year subjects. Now, there's, so there's the five general science training units. Then we have the professional practice units, which are here, central skills and science, the two second year units, and then a third year unit. <coughs> So these are a set of professional training practice units. This one, essential skills and training, does things like uh, scientific report writing, um, basic statistics in science. Um, but it also has a major, a major component about career planning and course planning. So it start, you start very early on in your first year thinking about where you want to take your Bachelor of Science. Um, uh, you know, trying to visualise the type of employment you want to end up in, how you're going to use your Bachelor of Science when you leave Deakin University, how it's going to work for you when, in, in terms of employment. And so you start, we start thinking about that really early on in first year in this unit. Then in second year unit, then in second year, we start looking at science communication um, uh, within the community and the role of science in society. So these sort of things, if you're going to be a science graduate working in um, uh, in, in the broader community, you need to be able to articulate um, uh, scientific information and evidence-based analysis and understanding of scientific issues clearly. And so these units are uh, professional practice units that enable you to develop those skills. Then at third year, we're getting into a more of a work integrated learning unit, this is community science project, where groups of students are undertaking uh, some sort of community science project for a particular client. And uh, that's um, uh, our third year unit, uh, our third year, uh, uh, professional practice unit. You can do other professional practice placement units as well. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. All right, well, this is the uh, basic core structure. So the Bachelor of Science is made up of uh, 20, you need to get what they say, what they always term 24 credit points, which basically you get one credit point per unit. So that means, you, or subject. So you need to get 24, you need to pass 24 subjects. The um, teal units, teal colored units and the pink unit here are our core units. So here are your basic science maths training units for the most part. It's a professional practice unit in here. Um, a lot of those are at first year. This is just indicative um, uh, course map. So for instance, this is not, on, you know, you can choose a different maths unit apart from this one. There's two and an active two and the same with the chemistry there's, there's a couple of chemistries there as well. So here we've got our biology, our environment, our maths, our physics and our chemistry. The physics unit we have is very much strongly related around uh, the physics of life and life sciences. Then um, uh, we have our professional practice units. That's the essential skills unit here Then our communicating science ideas and, and science and society, and then our communicating uh, community science project. So the core units are, is a combination of that um, general broad science training and professional practice. The general uh, broad science training is mostly at fir thir first year. The professional practice units are are uh, uh, um, uh, tiered um, uh, through the uh, three-year program. In the aqua uh, coloured units, this is where we have our major sequences. We have one listed here in first year, but I think there's only a couple of majors where they actually have a first year unit within them. Most majors are exclusively um, second, just second and third year units. Um, so you, you need to do six of them. They fit into this sequence. Now, as you can see, Given that most major subjects and, and most major sequences are second and third units, um, uh, you have first year to really decide what sort of specialisation you're going to take. So you get to do all these different subjects and, and make a decision about wh which direction you might like to specialise in. Even if you decide to do a major with the first year unit and you didn't do that first year unit during first year of study, you can usually 
actually pick that up in second year, uh, particularly within the single degree, because there's a lot of elective spaces. So there's a lot of flexibility within the degree. Now, with regard to these elective spaces, you'll you, you notice that there's easily a possibility for doing a second major. And as I said before, we strongly encourage our single degree Bachelor of Science students to do two majors. Use your two strings to your bow um, in terms of technical training. Um, but, you know, that's not the other way. You know, there, there, there's various ways you can look at this. And, you know, we've had, for instance, had students who've done animal biology majors. And so they've been trained in sort of the technical areas of animal biology. But what they've kind of done with their elective units is gone and done business and business administration units. And uh, what that's enabled them to do is um, to move into organisations um, that are related to animal biology, but in the more the business administration side of things. So again, it's another way of getting two strings to your bow and getting where you want to get to in terms of the type of organisations you might like to work for. Um, another common thing is to do, you know, is to do a major maybe in mathematics or environmental science or, or whatever, and and pick up as electives a number of IT units, information technology units, because they often provide you. Um, very uh, work relevant uh, skills and building those within to your bachelor of science degree can help enhance your employment and the employability uh, of your science degree. Right, moving on to looking at um, uh, um, teaching formats. Um, um, uh, most uh, sort of uh, classical lectures these days where you have a, an academic talking to a group of students, most of those at Deakin University are done online. They can be done in, uh, in a scheduled fashion where students uh, attend at a certain point in time and the lecture is given live online and there's the opportunity to ask questions and uh, become involved in discussion uh, to some extent. Um, those lectures are usually all, usually also recorded, so students have the option of coming in and, and asking questions or coming into the session at the time it's run online, um, or uh, listening to it later when it's as, as a recording. Uh, there's also for various subjects um, uh, seminar, so where there's a lot of student discussion that's required or group discussion that's required, students generally come in on campus for seminars. So there are some uh, units which have a lot, uh, quite a few seminars where you come on campus to undertake those that training. Now within the Bachelor of Science, we actually have quite a lot of on campus um, uh, classes, uh, and particularly in the form of laboratory practicals. So you just simply have to come in to do the laboratory exercises to get the you know, the, the practical hand skills in terms of uh, um, laboratory work relating to different scientific disciplines. So overall, the Bachelor of Science is pretty intensive um, in terms of being having a lot of on-campus study, unless you're doing the mathematical modelling major, um, and that is one where you can do uh, quite a lot of off-campus study or online study. And, uh, you know, and many of the units, uh, for instance, the mathematical modelling ones are run exclusively online. So it's what Deakin University calls blended learning. There's some online um, classes, uh, and but there is also a lot of laboratory exercise and seminars where you come in for um, on campus for for, for, for for those sessions. Some units also have field work associated with them too. And of course, you, you know, you can't do that online either. All right, so we can uh, move on to looking at uh, careers. And I guess there's three aspects to, the, to, to looking at future careers that might arise from a Bachelor of Science. One's by looking at your te technical specialist training within the majors, and there's diversity of pathways that are available depending on which major study options you've chosen. Um, also, as you uh, progress through the Deakin of your studies in the Deakin University Bachelor of Science, um, both for assessments and for non-assessment activities, um, you'll be doing um, things that develop your personal, what might be called personal skills. At Deakin University, call, we call them generic skills. So they're things like um, oral communication, presentations, um, report, uh, you know, written communications, uh, working effectively within groups and group work, teamwork, um, those sort of skills 
uh, are developed as a consequence of your studies at Deakin University, and they're developed quite purposefully. So you'll find that the academics design their assessments and their study programs around not only uh, technical training, but developing those other uh, personal skills and generic skills. The other thing that you have the opportunity to do at Deakin University is to put together a learning evidence portfolio where you, gather, where you can gather all the information, all the learning and um, items that relate to your learning throughout your course together in one place. And um, um, you can uh, organise that and you can package it in any way that you wish. You can integrate it in with any work that you've been doing whilst you've uh, been at Deakin University, whether it's relevant to your studies or not. There's always aspects of your work that you can work into um, relevance to your degree and, and uh, you can tell a story about your skills, particularly, you know, often and people working in areas outside science develop, you know, strong generic skills in, in various different areas, which they can then bring into that evidence portfolio and incorporate it in as a package um, in terms of their employability. And so there's those things students also do often do voluntary work uh, or voluntary activities that relate to their science discipline. All those sort of things help in terms of getting a job and you're able to package that together as this sort of evidence-based portfolio, which you can link to via LinkedIn and those sort of things. And it gives uh, potential employers very quick access to the range of uh, activities, the range of learning and the range of skills that you've developed um, in, in during your uh, Bachelor of Science studies. So there's three, three, three pronged approach, technical training, generic skills development, and um, putting together, uh, uh, um, uh, packaging your, your, your study program and integrating that in with your life and your work, work activities uh, so that you can go forward uh, into the graduate job market and, and be successful at using your uh, degree uh, um, in, in that sphere. So when we look talk about graduate employment outcomes, um, one of the things that we often get students to do <laughs> to go into, into early on, it's a good thing to do in first year actually, is to go on to um, employment advertising platforms such as Seek. And you can just simply type in, you know, the technical terms like biology and it'll throw up a whole lot of different jobs. In this case, nearly one and a half thousand jobs. And you can read through those jobs and look at the type of qualifications, the type of experience, the type of training and um, uh, uh, skills and um, personal attributes, generic skills that are that are required for these jobs. And that's a really good thing to do early on because it helps students visualise where they might like to go to in terms of their employment. And once you have that sort of vision, you can then start building your Bachelor of Science program around that. Um, there's another one here for chemistry, nearly 3,000 uh, jobs. And again, you know, it's just a matter of looking through those to gain an idea about um, the type of experience and um, uh, qualifications and the nature of the different type of work in these different areas. So it's always a good good thing to do um, in terms of um, uh, job search. You can you can even type in the search engine Bachelor of Science and it'll, it'll bring up a whole lot of uh, discipline specific jobs, but it'll also bring up a lot of jobs that people want a Bachelor of Science for that you might not think uh, 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 would be relevant. So, for instance, you know, there'll be a, you know pharmaceutical companies that may want people involved in, in marketing, but they need to have a basic um, training in science to be able to do that, or in sales, and they need to have basic training in science. We do that within that industry. And so um, these sort of investigations through Seek and so forth really open up the eyes of students about where they might take a Bachelor of Science program degree uh, forward. All right, so one of the part of the, part of the professional practice program uh, uh, we talked about <laughs> does involve uh, work integrated placements. Um, the community science project uh, core unit is sort of part of this um, um, group of studies which uh, include work integrated learning. So it's where you um, go out into industry and uh, you work in a, an area relevant to your university studies, particularly usually your major studies. <laughs> and you get uh, the opportunity to, to um, apply some of your newly learned technical skills as well as your interpersonal and uh, uh, generic skills 
um, in, in a work environment. And it gives you a really good opportunity, gives you a bit, sort of a bit of a, a first-hand look um, at the different industries and potential work environments uh, before you actually leave university. So as I said, the community science project falls into this sort of category, uh, but there are lots of other um, uh, units, which are work placement units, where you go into workplace, and, and you get credit for them as part of, uh, as, as a subject uh, within your university training. And they are very highly regarded amongst employers uh, when they see people have done these sort of placement units, um, typically within third year. Now, uh, finally, um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, further possible studies that might extend beyond your Bachelor of Science program. So for most of you, this seems a long, long way off because you're mostly interested in, in coming into an undergraduate Bachelor of Science degree program. But um, like all undergraduate programs, the Bachelor of Science programs is about learning, learning new knowledge, acquiring you, acquiring new knowledge. But once you start moving into um, honours year and into postgraduate studies, you move in, you shift away from just learning new knowledge to creating new knowledge. So that's really the basic difference between an undergraduate university degree and a postgraduate university degree. <laughs> now, honours is a transition year, which is a sort of a, a fourth year you do at the end of year three, third three year program. So if you do a single three year Bachelor of Science degree, um, if you uh, do reasonably well, you average over 65 or so uh, across all your units through your study, um, you become eligible to <coughs> apply to do honours, which is a fourth year of your undergraduate program. And you get to put in brackets after your degree honours. And for this, you usually do some assignment coursework, but a major component of your honours year will be a research project a small research project. And this is where each student will <coughs> link up and work closely with a particular member of academic staff who has an expertise in, in the area of their research project. And so it's at the very beginnings of creating, starting to create new knowledge. And then if you are successful in your Bachelor of Science Honours program, you can apply to do um, Master of Science and PhDs um, Doctor of Philosophies, uh, postgraduate programs as well. Um, and um, there are scholarships available for those programs as well if you want to go on and do that sort of thing. So that's sort of more advanced studies. So not every, that's, this is not for everybody. A lot of students go out, you know, after three years um, and go into the workforce and, uh, and start looking for a job. And certainly their qualifications will enable them to be successful at that if in, the, in the majority of cases. Um, but the, um, in terms, if you're interested in doing um, further study, um, that's another option. And about 20 to 30% of Bachelor of Science students do go on to do at least honours and then uh, some go on to even further study as well. So that's about um, all I have to uh, say today. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to ask questions um, in relation to the Bachelor of Science at Deakin University. And um, uh, I encourage you to do that as well. So thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Hello and welcome to Science Live Q&A session. I'm Professor John Donnell, and today I'm joined by our presenters, Mark, Angela, Fred, Jazair, and Lockie, who will now briefly introduce themselves. Thank you, Jazair. Hello, I am a fourth year student doing a Bachelor of Science at Deakin University. My majors are human biology and animal biology. Thank you. Thank you, Lockie. My name's Lockie. I'm a second year student. I'm currently doing a Bachelor of Science and I'm doing the majors of cell biology and human biology at Warm Ponds campus. Mark. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Mark Warren. I'm the course director for the Bachelor of Science at Deakin University. And um, I'm a senior lecturer and I teach in the area of environmental science and uh, research in the area of environmental geoscience. Thank you. Angela. Hi, I'm, I'm Dr. Angela Zabel. I teach first year chemistry at the moment. I've also got a really strong interest in careers and getting students ready uh, for the workplace and understanding that process that happens during your degree. And Fred. My name's Fred Pfeffer. I 
teach into the chemistry program at all year levels and have research interests in how molecules interact. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please type your question into the Q&A section in the question panel on this page. We will do our best to respond to all of your questions during this session. If you have any unanswered questions at the end of the session, our team of experts will be available on web chat all day to see any questions, including any specific international student related mission or fees queries. At the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you will notice a yellow chat now icon. Please click on this after the session to be connected with our team. To kick us off, we have our first question from Mel who asks, what careers does a Bachelor of Science lead into? And I might get Mark to answer this question. Um, many and varied is the uh, answer to that question um, because the Bachelor of Science, um, I guess you can think of it as having uh, uh, two components. One of it's uh, specialised training in terms of your majors, and they're very diverse. So you can do majors in animal biology or plant biology, chemistry, environmental science, mathematical modelling, uh, and others. And so that specialisation will uh, or can take you in quite different directions uh, in terms of employment outcomes. Um, so the other thing is that we do within the Bachelor of Science is that you get some uh, very rigorous training in what we call uh, generic skills. Perhaps you might uh, view those more as personal attributes, but you get a lot of uh, um, um, uh, opportunity to develop your communication skills, your teamwork skills, um, and those sort of things throughout your course. Um, and you'll have a lot of opportunity too, as well, to explore future employment directions whilst you're doing the course. So we have quite purposeful, purposeful components within some of our core units, which are about um, are guiding you through, to, through um, thinking through the very diverse employment opportunities that can arise from the Bachelor of Science. Now, they can be both, as I said, technical related to your majors, or they can apply your, uh, you know, your thinking skills, your analytical skills in a broader context as well. Um, so to give you a bit of an example, you might do um, a major in an animal, bio, an animal biology major. And you might want to um, move into that area. Well, if you also uh, undertake maybe um, an animal biology major and use some of the electives that you can choose within your BSc to do some business administration type units or something like that, you can meld those together and look to maybe get into employment within the administration of an animal biology type organisation. So it's just sort of looking at what your interests are and then during your course uh, um, thinking about where you want to go, visualising where you want to go in terms of employment, and we will help you with that and um, uh, building that um, portfolio of skills, both technical and generic, that enable you to head in the direction you want to go in. <clears throat> Thanks, Mark. Our next question comes from Jill, and the question is, in terms of workload, what would a typical week look like when doing the Bachelor of Science? Maybe it would be appropriate to ask both Jadzea and Lockie to comment on what their weeks look like at university, starting with Jadzea. Yes. So currently I only undertake three units at a time, so I don't technically have a full workload. But at the moment, it'll be a certain number of lectures per unit. This does vary per unit, as well as then lab time and seminar time. The lectures take up the majority of your time, I find. You know, they're about an hour, two hours, depending on the unit. So you've watched all those lectures, then you work on any major assignments, and then usually fortnightly there is lab. It will depend on your units how much lab you get. But at the moment, I tend to need to study from a nine to three type time period all weekdays, but then I can generally work around having my weekends free if you need to sort of balance work or something like that. Thank you. Lockie? Yeah, well, I'm very similar. I've got the same course structure, obviously, of um, seminars, lectures and practicals. 
So I do four units and I will usually have, um, for each unit, I'll have one fortnightly practical and three lectures per week for every prac, uh, for every unit. And I also have one um, fortnightly seminar for every unit. So it's not um, too busy. I find it definitely manageable. I have a part-time job um, where I work five days a week. So I think I definitely manage to fit uh, life and study into my workload. Um, but yeah, definitely manageable. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jack and it's, do you complete any placements within science at Deakin? And I might ask Angela to, to answer that question. Uh, yeah, there certainly are um, opportunities for uh, different types of placements. Some might be sort of the traditional ones where you um, might recruit your own place to go to, might align with um, maybe your subject interest or a skill that you want to um, get better at. Um, but then there's also lots of projects that run sort of in-house as it were, so that you might work with someone on campus in a team or by yourself and do a project which might be a research project or a communication project or um, working through um, documents with them, um, planning things, um, even maybe organising events. All of these have to be related to your degree in some manner or other. So there's heaps of opportunities at Deakin to do those sorts of things within the curriculum. And of course, there's opportunities to organise things outside of your credits as well. I might pass it to Mark to say um, what requirements there are in particular degrees in terms of will. Okay, so yeah, placement. So placement's part of our will program. Will stands for Work Integrated Learning. And within the BSC, See that sort of starts at first year and second year and then into third into third year that's when you start doing your uh, placement and your sort of project type work now in third year you will be required to undertake a core unit that is either uh, working as part of a team on um, some sort of community science project or you would be able to go and do a placement somewhere um, outside of the university. So there is um, embedded within the BSC, uh, 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 as I say, a work integrated learning stream, which as I said, starts off with you visualizing where you're going to try and end up with in terms of your uh, employment that might arise from your Bachelor of Science degree. Um, and then that progresses through second year and then third year, you actually get into doing uh, project work and placement work as part of your core program. In addition to that, if you wish to and you have room within your core structure and most people undertaking the single BSc degree do have room in their core structure, you can undertake additional placement units as electives as well. <coughs> Thank you, Mark. Um, the next question comes from um, John, and he wants to, to know about what particular research opportunities there are when you come to the end of a Bachelor of Science, and I might ask Fred to answer that question. Certainly, that's a great question. And at the end of your uh, undergraduate program, and you are, well, actually, it's not strictly the end of your undergraduate, you actually are able to undertake your an honours year in, in whatever particular discipline you like. So our particular school and the, which houses the sciences um, very much allows you to pursue an additional year of study which is called then an honours degree so you can have a fourth year which will count as an honours degree and that in itself is typically a an intensive research experience where you will work very closely with a supervisor on a very specific research question. Uh, most people find that a very challenging but also very rewarding year and it's a, a nice stepping stone into either a, I guess, you know, that extra degree gives you an advantage in going into the workplace but it also allows you to pursue additional research such as a master's or a PhD program. Thank you, Fred. Um, we have two questions around double degree options. And <clears throat> the first question is actually what those double degree options actually are and how do they benefit students in terms of their career pathways compared to those who are only doing a Bachelor of Science. And we might ask Mark to comment on the actual uh, programs that are offering and maybe Angela can make some comments about the benefit of doing a double degree. Okay, so um, the degree, double degree offerings that are available are 
the uh, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts degree, um, the Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Commerce degree, the Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Laws degree, and the Bachelor of Science and Masters of Teaching degree. Um, so uh, these, um, of course, take longer than the three years. And uh, typically, um, you need to take, the, instead of having to gain uh, 24 credit points, as in the single degree, you have to obtain uh, 32 credit points with 16 credit points coming from each. So it means that double degrees are a condensed program of study. And one of the key things about the double degrees is that you take a major or um, that sort of thing from either one of your degrees. And you don't usually have many elective spots as well because it's sort of you're cramming uh, two programs into study in, 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 into a shorter period of time. Okay, Angela, I'll hand over to you. Yeah. Yeah, um, so some background here is that I did a double degree. Um, so I did a science arts degree, um, a, a double major in chemistry and a single major in uh, human geography. So sort of that sustainable, how people work with the environment, that sort of space. Um, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the double degree. You know, it was an extra year of work. The workload, and I'm gonna tie in with another question I've seen pop up here. The, I think the degree is great, great. And I also think that doing something with two different, slightly differently weighted focuses, it can provide a nice balance. It's actually not more workload, it's simply longer. Um, but I found in semesters where I had very different units, it meant that I wasn't just simply doing lots of labs and getting exhausted writing lots of many lab reports. So I wasn't doing lots of essays and getting exhausted writing lots of essays. I was doing a nice, interesting balance. And um, so that was great. I wouldn't see it as extra workload at all. Um, I should tie in, I guess, with Jadzia that she's doing three units at a time. And that's really very common. And you can also pick up units at summer sometimes. So that's another way if you're wondering about balancing a degree or a double degree that you have some options available to you. I think the strength of a double degree is it really broadens your skill set. You can absolutely do this with an amazing mix of electives if you want to. Having an extra year in your degree just allows you to do more of it. Um, and I guess it's a bit more of a concise focus because instead of doing your own selection of uh, electives, for example, then you're doing um, something, a major somewhere else that's curated by the um, academics in that space. So it gives you really that focus in that area and really upskills you across all of the levels and skills in that space. Thank you, Angela. Um, our next question, is uh, can electives come from any area of the university? And <clears throat> we might handle this by getting Mark to comment on the, the actual uh, sort of governance around electives. And then we might ask the two students what electives they've chosen to do as part of their study. Yeah, so um, within the Bachelor of Science, you need to take uh, nine core units. Um, and um, six of those are in basically first year science and maths. So what we're trying to do here is to ensure that students undertaking the BSc at Deakin can get a broad training in maths and science. Now, we understand, of course, that a lot of students come in to our BSc without um, comprehensive uh, across the board maths and science studies in VCE or, or, or in other ways. And we do um, accommodate that. So don't be concerned about the fact that you need to do physics in first year. We understand that a lot of people coming into the course haven't done physics before, and we do um, accommodate that um, in, a, in a way that we structure and run the program. So there's those nine core units, three of them in the math science area and three of them are in the work integrated learning area or placement areas. And then in addition to that, you need to do at least one six credit point major, uh, which is uh, six subjects. And um, typically um, most of the units within majors, um, not in every case, but in most cases, are second and third year units. So you get, a, you get first year really to have a look around and um, try out different types of uh, areas of uh, study to see which ones you're very interested in. 
and um, and to make your choices in terms of a major going into uh, second and third year. That's mostly the case. Um, uh, and you need to do a six credit point major. Now, if you're doing a single degree, you can use your electives to do a second major. So, uh, for instance, um, a common a common uh, second major is um, uh, human biology combined with cell biology and genomics. They're two majors that often people take together. Another one um, that is a good one to do is environmental science and chemistry, because a lot of environmental jobs relate to environmental problems and um, they're often of a chemical nature. So within the single degree, you can do those double majors, which really um, strengthen your technical capabilities um, within your BSc. But you don't have to. You, only, you, only, you are only required to do a single major. And if you want to, you can broaden your studies and do electives from elsewhere. So for instance, some students choose to do electives in the area of information technology, IT, which gives them a bit of a strength around those areas and it's sort of adding that extra string to their bow in terms of employability. And as I said before, some students take business studies um, uh, as part of their electives. And again, it strengthens their overall training within their BSc in terms of uh, gaining future employment. But having said that, other students do just want to do things they're really interested in. And you do have the opportunities within the BSc to use your electives to do things that are, um, if you like, completely disconnected uh, from the BSc if you've got other areas of interest and you can add that into your, your, your qualification. So um, that's the case with the single Bachelor of Science degree. Once you get into the double degrees, all those sort of options are not available because you're cramming two program, degree programs together and there aren't very many electives available within double degree programs because you're already effectively doing a double major. You're doing a major within the BSc then with the, and within the other degree. So there is a few rules around um, how many electives you, you're able to, to take within your BSc. Um, and where, what areas they are in. So, um, um, for instance, you're not allowed to take more than 10 first year subjects uh, as part of your degree program. And at least four of your uh, third year uh, subjects um, need to be in the science area. So, you know, as I said, if you think of the single degree, it's 24 credit points, usually um, uh, eight, uh, um, eight uh, per year, so, um, and that makes up 24. And so you need to be careful about those little details um, when you enrol, just to make sure that you're meeting the course rules, such as, you know, at least four science units a third year. Okay. Thanks, Mark. <coughs> Lockie, what electives did you choose to do? Um, I've chosen to do English literature electives. I'd like to be a secondary teacher as an English and science teacher. So I've been able to actually undertake a minor in um, English literature, which has been really good. Um, I've kind of had that mix, which has been really nice. So I've kind of, I guess it's different areas that you're working in with the English essays um, and then the science practical reports. I've yeah, really enjoyed being able to have that flexibility with my study. Thank you. And Gisette? So when I was talking to um, degree counsellors at Deakin, I found that most of the units I was interested in were essentially only science units. I'm just a science person. That's all I ever want to do. So my electives ended up sort of overlapping so much with the second major human biology that I ended up doing both of them purely because my electives were already about to get me that second major. So by doing both, I sort of filled up all of those elective spaces with just science units, a couple of health units here or there. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears> the <throat> next question actually again for Jose and for Lockie, and that is, are there any additional costs such as buying textbooks that you've had to occur in your studies? And I'll start with Lockie. Um, I haven't really had to pay that much money for um, textbooks. I borrow all of my books from the library um, only because I'm a bit tight and I don't want to spend that much money because textbooks <laughs> can be quite expensive. Um, so, yeah, I think there's plenty of options, loads and loads of textbooks in the library, even if you just have to get like the second most recent edition. Um, yeah, so not my, I haven't had to outlay any additional funds really for my education, which has been good. Um 
when we were still on campus in my first year of my degree, I did end up needing to buy things like textbooks, um, the printouts of lab instructions, your lab coat, your goggles and those things. But um, I was easily able to find all of those things secondhand. Deacon makes it pretty easy um, in the community for you to communicate with other students to buy them secondhand. So I never had to pay full price, which was good. And then I was able to resell when I didn't <clears throat> need those things anymore. But since moving to online, most of those things are now not paid. Uh, all the textbooks are provided digitally. Um, so you don't have to pay for them anymore. So I haven't really had that much extra cost at Deakin because they've moved really to an online type textbook setting. Thank you. Um, we have a question about the uh, types of chemistry that are in the uh, the chemistry major of the BSc, and maybe we'll get Fred to talk about that. Okay, the different types of chemistry. Well, we cover a range of the chemistry sub-disciplines, but probably the one of the biggest focus, one of the big focuses that we have is on analytical chemistry, because that ties in very much so with the forensic science program. But we have also, in a recent restructure of our chemistry major, introduced or strengthened offerings in inorganic chemistry and also organic chemistry. So you'll get a, a good breadth of chemistry disciplines if you undertake the chemistry major. Um, and yeah, we have also had a, a real focus on trying to revitalize some of the practical exercises amongst that major too. So you will get some good hands-on training with some, some nice instrumentation. Might, might, be, might be also worth mentioning, Fred, that the chemistry major has had external accreditation from the Royal Australian Chemical Institute. So it's, uh, it's an accredited uh, program of study in chemistry. Indeed it is. Thanks, Mark. Um, our next question is about study abroad opportunities when you do science at Deakin. And um, Mark can explain what the opportunities are and perhaps uh, Jose and Lockie have, have actually taken a vow and not really, I guess, in the pandemic, sorry. Uh, but, uh, you know, what they would have considered would have been an interesting study abroad option if it had been available. So we'll start with Mark. Uh, well, there's sort of two different uh, areas of studies abroad. You can, within your BSc, you can take electives, uh, which are sort of uh, overseas study programs, uh, such as um, studying environmental science, ecological sciences in Borneo, uh, those sort of things. So there are available um, those specific units and subjects uh, that some students undertake which relate to overseas study. The other option is that you can actually apply to do a year of overseas study at, at a university in Canada or wherever. And uh, the process uh, involved in that is that students will um, look at the uh, subjects that are available in those other universities and uh, try to match them as most best as possible to Deakin University study programs. And then usually in consultation um, with relevant staff at Deakin, um, they come to uh, uh, put together a program which basically matches uh, the Deakin program for a period of time. It might be a term or a semester or a year. And uh, then I over, undertake that over at the other at the overseas university, and then they gain credit for that as part of their deacon degree, so that their progression through the years is not disrupted. And um, they're the sort of main two uh, ways in which you can engage with overseas study. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> while we're just on topic, I perhaps ask Jose and Lockie whether they would have undertaken study abroad if they'd had the opportunity. Um, I actually studied abroad in high school, so when I came to Deakin, I didn't feel it was necessary to pursue that again. And then, of course, because of the pandemic, it wasn't really available anyway. Mm. So, no, I yeah. hadn't really considered it. Lucky? There, there's loads of opportunities for stuff like that at Deakin. I'll get weekly emails um, just outlining all the different opportunities that we have to go and do different um, placements overseas with different organisations. Um, I haven't really had a look at the moment just because I haven't had the time um, and obviously because of the pandemic, but it's definitely, yeah, loads of exciting opportunities that you can make the most of. Okay, we are coming to the end of our, our live uh, Q&A session, so we only have time for a few more questions. Our next question is about the facilities available to study a Bachelor of Science um, at both uh, Warm Ponds 
<coughs> excuse me, I'm in a Burwood. So we'll get Fred to talk about warm ponds and Mark and Angela to talk about Burwood. Thanks, John. Happy to do so. Um, so we've been pretty pretty lucky down at the Warm Ponds campus because a lot of the, the general research infrastructure is, is housed there. And so our laboratories are actually linked in many ways to some of that, I guess, more research intensive, uh, the more research intensive laboratories. So we don't just get to use the facilities that are available inside the lab itself, but in some cases we get to, to access some of the additional instrumentation that's available. So the lab setup's actually quite good. Um, typically you'll be doing a laboratory with anywhere between say 10 and 20 others, depending on what year level and whether how specialist that subject is, uh, and all of the equipment and everything that you need is provided there for you as soon as you uh, enter the laboratory. Thanks, Fred. <coughs> what about a Burwood? Um, well, uh, as I said before, BSE is very diverse. If you're doing sort of analytical uh, type uh, majors, such as uh, chemistry, uh, you're in state-of-the-art equipped uh, teaching laboratories for that purpose. Uh, usually our prep classes at Burwood are a little bit bigger than down at Geelong. So there might be up to 30 or 40, even maybe 40 students within the prep class. But um, if you have those bigger prep classes, you always get multiple demonstrators there to assist. So, um, you know, so we have the, the, the standard uh, practical laboratories, a lot of which, are, uh, many of which are Burwood. Our science laboratories have been re recently refurbished. And um, uh, you will, we also have seminar rooms. Um, our lecture theatres get used a little bit less than they used to uh, because Deakin has adopted um, what they call a blended uh, learning program where a lot of the lectures are now given online. So you're mainly brought into the university if you want to in, in a class where there's a lot of discussion or where you need to use practical equipment um, where there's sort of what the university terms active learning when you're actually doing something, um, you're brought into the university for those, uh, those sort of laboratories. So that, that sort of thing covers in, in sort of chemistry. In maths, it's much more workshops and seminars to help students be able to um, deal with um, uh, gaining skills in, 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 in problem solving, mass problem solving, um, in things like the um, plant biology and uh, environmental science, you're more likely, uh, well, not more likely, you're going to have a, a significant component of practical work, of field work, I should say, as well. So you're going to be taken out into the field, um, either locally or um, at some distance away from the university for field camps and those sort of things. So, you know, the facilities and, of course, all the field facilities that you will need um, and field equipment that you will need um, is available at Deakin for those purposes. So uh, in summary, everything you will need to gain the skills that you require to uh, qualify as a professional within different areas are provided um, as part of the facilities at Deakin University. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> We're coming to our last question, and that is what makes the Deakin Bachelor of Science degree unique? And we'll start with Angela. Um, well, I've just come to Deakin in September, uh, and my impression is that there is um, a, a, there's a great emphasis, it really is, it's not just an impression given to students, that there's a high focus on employability and getting you ready for the workplace. Or, and that's throughout all of the different um, levels. I'm not sure if you remember Mark referring to that, but there's, there's things at every level um, and we're increasing that every year. So it's not just there's a placement, there's thought going into all of the units and all of the labs to get you ready for the workforce and make sure all of that maps together within your degree. So I think that's a really important difference. And um, at the university I came from, that was not really done. Thank you, Angela. We might finish up by asking Josea and Lockie what their favourite thing is about the Bachelor of Science at Deakin. So Josea first. When I joined Deakin, I did it because I had no idea where I wanted to go. When you come out of high school, usually the kind of science you do is so basic that you have no idea what you're good at and what you actually enjoy. And going into that Bachelor of Science, it was so broad that I was able to sort of taste test everything I wanted to try to figure out not only where I had skill, but what I enjoyed. And then I was able to then go from there, keep pursuing the things that I enjoyed. And it's really given me the opportunity to 
make sure that I've explored everything so I don't leave my degree feeling like, well, maybe I could have done this or could have done that because I've had a good opportunity to try everything, which has been really, really good for me. Lockie? I agree with Josiah. I think it's just such a broad course um, that makes it really, really special um, to be able to pick and choose what you'd like to do, really develop what you want to do um, as an individual and also just meet a lot of people. There's a lot of broad and diverse people that do um, the Bachelor of Science. So, yeah, I've just enjoyed every opportunity that I've been given. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Thank you all for joining us. It's really great to see so many of you interested in science and to receive so many great questions. If we have not responded to your question, again, please join our all-day web chat at the bottom right of your screen where expert staff are ready to answer your questions. If you'd like to learn more, you'll also find loads of really useful resources on our Deacon Open Day website that we encourage you to explore. Thanks for your time, and we hope to see you at Deacon soon.